Good morning, afternoon, evening. Not sure when you're catching this, but hopefully you are. This episode, I get to change the slicks out on my race cart. We've got a 72 Porsche 911T to review, and I take up some questions that were presented on the channel by some of the viewers. Let's just get started, okay? Cue the banjo. To begin with, I'm changing these tires because they're, they're pretty much shot, right? They're, they're done. They're Evinco blues as compared to Evinco reds. The blues are a harder compound. They're less sticky, but they last longer. So I was using them when I was practicing. I'm replacing them with some Levanto tires. They're supposed to be the best of both worlds. So we'll see what happens there. Now this process is not easy. You can do this without tools. And I tried that once. Went out to YouTube, watched some young guy out there do it in five minutes, said no problem. Two hours later, I finally got them all done and I looked like a pack of wolves had beat me up. So I learned my lesson the hard way and now I have tools to do the job. To start, take the wheel off and break off the bead locks. Bead locks will let the air out of the tire or you can take the bead lights off and take the tires off. Doesn't really matter what order you do. I like to take the bead locks off because, well, I don't know, I just do. Simple enough. Nice hubs, by the way. These wheels, you can get them in aluminum. These are aluminum or magnesium. The aluminum ones are super light. So I don't, I, I guess every bit, little bit helps because you can get these in magnesium, but magnesium is easy to damage as well. Next, break the tire from its seal of the rim. Place it in the machine. Little tool here. Uh, this takes some pressure. I got this plastic little stand here. Hopefully, I don't need to put this on the floor. There we go. Now that we've broken that bead off, I have another tool right here that helps take this off the rim. And use, use it from the back side. Place the front down, use it from the back. Put this little plastic provided piece into the back side. Make sure it's seated in there. This way. Pardon me. There we go. There we go. There. And then seat it in there and spread apart there we go there we go there now it's out so now we're going to put the tire on the rim these are nice looking tires quite honestly yeah. pretty cool i believe the best way to do this and it's been a while from me. Maybe use a little bit of soapy water on there and just jam it on from the backside, if I remember right. But maybe I could be wrong. Nope, that's it. The backside of this is a bit tricky at least it is for me you use the tool in the opposite direction we used it in this direction to get the tires off to get them on and on the back side of here we're going to use it in this direct this direction excuse me use it in this direction to get them off we're going to use it in this direction to put them on you put your spacer in there and the idea is to get this that little piece there this little rib into the rim and you know what 
maybe just a little bit of I don't have any tire grease uh, but a little bit of soapy water will, could help and the jam this into the tire and for me it's just really really fiddly uh, Eventually, right? Yeah, like I said, that's always been fiddly for me. And I don't know why. I apparently don't have the right technique. Somebody out there on YouTube probably could give me a lesson. Now we're going to put some air in here and seal the bead around the rim. You know, put the, the bead locks in. Make sure you check the O-rings on the bead locks themselves. Make sure they're not damaged. And when you put the bead locks in, don't screw them all the way in or you won't get the tire to seat. Get them just kind of flush with the inside of the rim where the screws are. Maybe even a little bit of soapy water inside there or something like that. Just a little bit, nothing much in there to help it seal it. And let's put some air into it and get this to speed. Come on. There we go. Now, there's probably way too much air in here right now, right? So taking out the bead lock, letting the air, both sides are sealed. You put the bead locks back in. Finger tight is all you need on this. You don't want to rupture those O-rings. I have this neat little thing, it's an air compressor by Milwaukee. It's battery operated. You can dial in the tire pressure you want and this just screws into the Schrader valve kind of like a high-end bicycle pump and I believe all you do is hit go there you have it I love taking this thing to the track I don't need a lot of compressed air at the track. This is all I really need. Should be 10 pounds. That's good enough to for set up when I get to the track. I'll, I'll, I got a pretty good tire gauge that it's very accurate and that's what I'll use to dial in the track temperatures or whatever I need for the track pressures. The last thing you can do, I don't see too many people doing this, but I have it. And that is a wheel balancer. And then I have weights. And I believe you can put those on the back side. Let's see. It wants to roll down here. Like right. Let me get a pin. So it's heavier down here. I wonder what five grams would do on the other side. That's pretty good. It's done. They're on. And these people, these are pretty good looking tires, aren't they? I, I think so, as far as car tires go. They feel pretty sticky right here. These will go into the bin. It really wasn't that bad. I'm gonna put you back on the stand over here. It really wasn't that bad once I got the hang of it. Some of the tools I used for this, of course, was a 10 millimeter socket to get the tires off. This right here 
we use to break the bead from the tire from the rim. This tool right here, we use to get the tire off the rim and back on the rim. You saw me struggle getting the last bit of tire back on the rim for the new tires. I got better as that, better with that as I went from tire to tire. Hey, uh, tire balancer and the pressure pump. That's pretty much it. Thank you for joining me on this. Be sure to catch the next little clip. We got a cool 1972 911T Porsche that came into the shop and I just did a quick filming of that. Really nice looking car. Catch that before you leave, okay? This is a 1972 Porsche T. T, I believe, stood for the entry-level position. It's got stamped steel wheels. It's got a flat six on it, dry sump lubrication. It has 130 horsepower and 144 foot-pounds of torque, I believe. But the car only weighed 2,300 pounds. This one has some livery on the side. I'm not sure if he's been on all those, all those cruisers or not, but that's pretty cool. I'm not sure of the color on this. I'm not really up to date on all my Porsche colors, but it almost looks like a hugger orange that they had in 1969 for a Chevrolet, like my Corvette. Now, this one's set up in what I would call a Rally's Edition. It's even got quite a bit nicks in the front. I really love it. I think the compression ratio on that was really low, seven, five to one. The interior in this is kind of a hound's tooth, what they had back in the day. I really, really enjoy that, it's clean. I drove it into the, the bays and it's tight. It's got a little five-speed transmission on it, floor pedals. I'm not sure if the odometer's right on that or not, but it's been restored, I would believe. Really nice, nice, nice car. I'm glad it came in. Thanks for the guy letting me film this. We'll put it out there on the site and just do a little quick jaunt on it. Looks great. Awesome. Love cars like this. Can't believe I get some of these cars in this shop like this. Last but not least, I'm going to answer a question that popped up by one of our viewers on YouTube, and that is, where is the lower pressure port on modern AC systems for modern cars? And they're located between the compressor and the evaporator. The high pressure port is going to be located between the compressor and the condenser. As these systems work, the compressor compresses the gas that causes heat. It runs through the condenser, usually then through a dryer and then through an expansion valve. And that expansion valve allows that gas to rapidly expand, causing cold, basically. And you run that through a radiator, which is the evaporator, blow a fan against it, and that will cool the cabin. That runs through the ducting of the car. So again, the low pressure port between the compressor and the evaporator. Now, this is wherever the manufacturer decides to put it. Sometimes I find them in the weirdest of places. Uh, on this car right here, which has been metrofitted, and we'll go over that. We've seen on the previous episodes, of course, it's right down there. There's the low pressure port in blue, high pressure port in red. Now, my wife's car is a little different. It has the high pressure port right here. 
and that is marked not by color by a little H on top of the cap underneath the brake fluid thing right here cover is the low pressure port right here and again it's marked by an L on the low pressure port this brings us back to what we all face today and that is the internet which drives us to find all kinds of things to our cars what did we use like old guys like me before the internet well we use books we go down to the parts store and they'd have books like Chilton's something like that and they had from bumper to bumper the maintenance and repair of your particular car imagine that books 